This is the brown here, and uh, I've got quite a few Blu-rays actually. It's a pretty good size update. I haven't got, I've just got them over like the past few weeks or so, or the past month, and I just haven't got around to talking about them. So uh, here I am talking about them. And the first one is um, Dead Man Down. What's the name of the director? Nils Arden Opliv. Um, he's the director of the Swedish version of A Girl with a Dragon Tattoo. This is his first Hollywood film, also starring Numi Rapace, who she played as um, Elizabeth Salander in the Swedish version. So it's kind of like another collaboration between them two. You got Colin Farrell, of, uh, I think it's, yeah, Terrence Howard. Uh, there's the back there. But um, this one, it kind of makes me think of like Leon the Professional and um, like the whole, the whole way it plays out. Like Colin Farrell, he's kind of, he's a, he's like a hitman for, he works for Terrence there and uh, he just, you know, he's like, he's part of this big gang of thugs or whatever and hitmen, hit guys that go out and like, kill or you know, beat people for him, get money from him. And he lives across from Numi in these apartments. In his room, there's like, they, they go around like this, and here's like his window, and here's her window, so they can kind of, and they have balconies, so they can kind of see, he can see in her room, and she can see in his room. And uh, she lives with her mother. She's got this scar on her face. And um, she sees him kill a guy in his uh, apartment. And then she um, she kind of plays it off as like she's real shy or whatever, and don't and um, she doesn't really like to kind of uh, she kind of has lost like her will to do things and associate with people because of her scar, which she goes over and meets eventually meets Colin, um, thinking or he thinks that she's uh, uh, trying you know trying to see him and try to you know have a date with him and uh, start a relationship with him and it turns out that um, she takes him they're supposedly supposed to go on this date and they go to the guy's place where the guy she got in a car wreck and the the guy or he's the guy that hit her and gave her the scar and she knows that he she has footage of him killing the guy in his apartment she wants him to kill the guy for her or else she'll uh, call the cops on him and so well and he's so he agrees to do this and um, this they kind of start to form a relationship between the two of them they start to feel feelings for each other but you end up finding out like a lot about um, his past like I'm just gonna have this are gonna be spoilers on here so if you don't want to see any spoilers and either don't watch or skip ahead but um, originally he goes by another name and this is where it's kind of like the Leon parts, where like um, his he moves over to America with his wife. He's like this an engineer job from working in the military, and the the Terrence guy he actually killed his wife, and um, I think he had a kid too. I think they killed the kid. No, no, they killed his wife, and and so he worked works for him. You know, he gets in close to him, so and he. Plays, plays all these different things out. He's got this big plan to where he's going to, you know, end up killing him. And he pretends to kill the guy for her, but then she finds out that he didn't really die. And it's, there's really a scene where she's like sitting there and she gets back to her kind of her, um, she's not really a hairdresser, she's kind of, or yeah, kind of like a stylist. And, um, she's, plugging this the one woman's um, eyebrows and she started to actually starts ripping them out and then she didn't realize it because she's you know she's thinking about you know this guy died because of really because of me because of my feelings and wanting revenge for all this and then she finds out you know that he he didn't kill him so she actually feels better because he knew that if she had to live with that you know that feeling and that guilt of having been uh, involved with killing someone then it would really, you know, break her, and so he, that's why he didn't do that, to kind of spare her of that, so he, she, she didn't have to go through with that. But in the end, he ends up uh, getting killed, but not actually by, um, not actually by Colin. He actually go, they, 
um, take her hostage because they find out about her and they found out about him and the, Terrence's house and he goes there to you know save her and so and like at the beginning of the movie this one guy's talking about you know how like live he's still watching the kids and is watching this guy and his baby and he's like you know you know to be attached to people you know and to like actually love things in this world love people and you know he's and uh because in the beginning, he's, you know, it's like, he sees that, and he kind of questions it, but then you later on finding out, I mean, you know, about his past and all that. So it really kind of changes perspective once you see his backstory and what he's really, you know, trying to do and to have this big, this big revenge. But um, he ends up saving her, and he, uh, they get together at the end of the film. And I love the way the pacing on this is, uh, very well written. There's only, only like a big action scene towards the end, and like a small one in the beginning. Um, this is kind of the way, actually, watching this made me feel, you know, like, because I'm big into writing screenplays, and this is like exactly how I'd write my screenplays. It's just like this, so I really thought that was pretty great, watching this. But that is uh, Dead Man Down. I haven't seen the Swedish girl with dragon tattoo because I just I love the Rooney's, you know, her performance and her version of Lisbeth. So I'm not, I'm never, I'm just going to stay away from watching the Swedish one. But I ha I do have a Swedish film of Numi's, um, The Monitor. I mean, she is just an amazing actress. I mean, Prometheus, she's got um, Brian De Palma's Passion coming out. So I'm sure it's amazing, but I'm sticking to the David Fincher, you know, Rooney Mara, Daniel Craig version because that's just, that's the film I love. So, but there's a um, review for Dead Man Down. And these are all Blu-ray updates. And this is classic Fifth Element, another one that I've got used. I've been buying a lot of these used lately. I figure, you know, you get them cheaper. What's the point in paying full price when you can go on there and get them for like a buck or so or a few bucks? Some or some things on there or even a penny or a few cents. But Luke Besson's Fifth Element. If you haven't seen this, it's just such a fun movie. Um, how to explain this? It's like it's space. It's kind of like the classic, like you know, good versus evil. The guy has to save the world and get the girl, and um, Bruce Willis, he's kind of like an ex-military, he plays this cab driver, and he's running out of credits on to be a cab driver, and he's just like running low on luck, lives in this apartment with his cat, and um, in the beginning these aliens show up at this, like the in Egypt in this pyramid 300 years earlier, and they tell this monk guy that's like the guardian there of the temple that, you know, in 300 years, the evil's going to come. And he just has to have this key. And, uh, you know, and um, to hang on to it. And in 300 years, they'll appear when the evil appears. And it'll be time to stop the evil. So he gives that guy the key, then goes to 300 years later. And then um, Ian Holm there, he has that key. He's the monk with a, it's like a little comedic sidekick guy. A lot of comedy in this. And um, she actually, uh, Mila, she actually is the fifth element. Um, she's um, designed or made to stop the evil. And so between him and him and uh, her, they end up going out to this, I forget the name of the place. It's out on this floating, like, paradise ship around this planet where they meet her. And she's actually, she has the, um, the four stones inside her, the other elements and they have to get those to put them in the temple and then put her in the center and that'll stop this big evil like meteor de meteor of death from arriving on earth and um, in the end of course he gets the girl and um, just uh, re really well done action scenes camera work in this is really amazing the special effects it's like kind of like the classics like rubber Costume, suit, robotic special effects, a lot of like the props and the costumes. Um, just great performances from, you know, Gary Oldman. He places the villain, played as the villain in Bassan's uh, Leon the Professional. But set in this just like futuristic, you know, like New York, 300 years in the future. And um, it's really one of those like the. 
this dish will probably run for a while. But it's really like the you no know, one of the girl uh, babes who who kick ass films because she she watches like Bruce Lee, and then she's like you know and then she she knows martial arts. Um, so you feel like a lot of like femme fatale films, which a lot of Besson's films are femme fatale films. A lot of Tarantino, Seiji Suzuki, a lot of the classic, if the martial arts genre. But um, all in all, it's just a very, just I mean, a really well done film. If you want to have a good time, you know, with a little bit of action, comedy, uh, suspense, romance. Um, if you're into sci-fi, uh, definitely check this one out. Luc Besson's Fifth Element. And uh, this is Ang Lee's The Ice Storm, uh, Criterion release. I was bit, I've been waiting to get this film for so long. This is like my third favorite film of his now for me. The only two that beat this are his two uh, Chinese <coughs> speaking films, or the films that he filmed in China. But this is just such a powerfully like emotional film. Um, there's the, the back. And then you got the disc, and then this takes place in like the late 60s, around the time of like the Nixon scandal when he was president, like the Vietnam War going on. And you've got you've got these two kind of neighboring families. You've got one family, the father's uh, Kevin Klein and his wife, and then uh, they have the son, Toby Maguire, and the daughter, played by Christina Ricci. And then the, the family right across from him, the wife is um, Sigourney Weaver, her husband. Or they have a younger son, an older son, played by um, <clears throat> Elijah Wood. There's even a, a cameo in here by a really young um, Katie Holmes in here. But it's just this really just powerful, like kind of gripping drama, really, between the two families. Like I like the, I love the use of the ice in this, the element and like the cold, like the way they, the season itself, what it represents. Like that shot there, that's actually a. Elijah Woods walking off. This is the, his brother looking through the window and he sees him. I love the like the way they use like the you know the weather, the snow, and the ice, and like the ice cubes during mill time. That really like takes effect in the film. Like it starts off in this opening shot where it looks like the train is not even moving. It's just like this iced over track and there's this train and it just looks like dead in the middle of this cave. But it's actually night. And then the cave, you know, it or not the cave, not the cave, not the train. It just it comes back on. They get regained power, and Tobey Maguire is reading um, Fantastic Four comic on the train about how like the families, like the power of the families, and kind of like the way like people like break away from the family and then end up coming back to it. And then just like you just have to see it. It's just such an amazing. And then he you ride in you ride pretty much a train ride in the film. But between the two families. Like, there's a lot of, like, the coming of age with, like, Christina Ricci and Tobey Maguire and Elijah Wood and his younger brother. It deals a lot with that. Like, the daughters and sons have relationships. And then the Kevin Klein is she, he cheats on his wife with um, Sigourney Weaver. So they're having an affair. And in the, in the end, they go to this, uh, like, it's called, like, a key party where every, all the couples, you know, put their keys in this bowl. And at the end of the party... The wives draw keys and go home with you know certain whoever husband it is they get the keys to their car to, and um, his wife finds out or she figures out that he's having an affair with uh, Sigourney, and it kind of plays off that about and then she thinks that that's the setup to where Sigourney is going to get the key, his keys, but she ends up going for this really young guy. This one woman brings her son to the party, and then. Um, and so she actually, his wife, he, she gets the keys to Sigourney's husband, kind of, just kind of like, just because she's just so pissed, and all these different feelings, and, um, just the end, like, I'm not going to truly spoil it, but there's a certain person's death in the midst of all this towards the end that kind of brings, you know, the family's, like, kind of, it brings the family aspect back together, and then it because the and then it re go, revolves back around the opening shot. It cuts back around the end of the film to Toby riding in on the train. He gets off the train. And he's you know he's smiling and happy to see his family again. And his dad's like crying, and like it's just such an emotionally powerful film. 
you definitely check this one out or all of Ang Lee's films. Just such an amazing um, director who have all of his films now. But that Ice Storm by Ang Lee. And there's another emotionally powerful film. Kinsey Mishiguchi, or say his name, yeah, Mizuguchi's um, Life of Oharu. This is just like the saddest story um, I've seen on film for any one person in particular. Ohar she's Oharu. And if you've seen like Sancho the Bailey for any of his kind of like fallen women, like the prostitute films, you'll see his portrayal of women in Japan and how they really, really this film really just showcases just how bad they really had it. And there's the back there. This is also a Criterion release. Just came out. The disc and the booklet. But, um, it starts, how to go through this, it starts off like, um, there's actually a cameo by Toshiro Mifune. She falls in love with him, but because he's like this really poor, he's a poor and lives in the poor family and because she's more, she's not really like truly rich, but she's higher up ranked in society and they find out about it. And that's like against the law at the at their time. This like early like, this probably like 1800s or late 1800s. And um, because of that, um, her and her family get um, exiled from whatever. I'm trying to think what town they live in. I think it's like Kyoto at the time. But they get kicked out of the the town there or the city, and they actually be, um, behead Toshiro. But she's kind of like, she's, she, has, she has to live with shame throughout her whole life. And it's really sad. And like, they live out in the countryside. And this one guy, he sees her. He's looking for this, you know, certain, like, per perfect woman to have the child of this, um, the prince's, to have the child of the prince. And so he finds her. And he actually, he buys her. Her, her own father sells um, her to him. He's just so, he don't even realize, it's like he don't even care for her, his daughter. And so he sells her to him, and then she goes in the palace, and, you know, she gets pregnant, and has, she lives there for that time while she's pregnant, and then she has his child. And then after that, like, the, the prince actually had, he really uh, liked her and had feelings for her, but the, peop the other people around him in the palace don't just don't want her there, so they kick her out. And then she's, like, on the streets, and she, she has to go back to her family, and she can't even see her child. As soon as her child's born, her son, you know, they take him away from her. And then her, her dad, once again, sells her again. Um, I'm trying to think what the name, like a courtesan is where they're kind of like these guys come in and buy wives. And so that guy actually goes in there to try to buy her and throws money at her. And he throws the money back at him, you know, like, you know, I have more pride than this. I don't, I don't need this money. It's like kind of like, you know. I'm not the, this isn't how I am, you know, this isn't who I am. And um, he ends up going through the people that run the place and buys her from from them that way. And, um, or no, no he doesn't. No, because she doesn't accept the money, they end up kicking her out. He goes to buy her, but all of his money is counterfeit. So he gets, he goes to jail or whatever. So they kick her out on the streets yet, yet again. And then she, like, tries to be this nun. And um, during that time, she's a, or no, let's see. She's on the streets, and she like, kind of goes back with her mother. I forgot what, hap what happens to her father. Her mother, I think, they kind of break up. And then a guy sees her, and he don't care about her past. He's just like, you know, he loves her for who she is. And so she actually gets married for it's like a year or so to this guy. She really loves, she's actually has a, she really loves life and all this and loves her husband and has a caring husband that cares about her. And he ends up getting like sick and dies. So that, that ruins that. And then she, that's when she tries to be a nun. Um, she goes to this place and she lives in a certain house there and like the nunnery or whatever you call it where the nuns stay. And um, this guy shows up, and he's like, you know, hey, that the sash you're wearing, like, or all the fabrics, you know, your husband owed me this debt, and he never really actually paid for them, so I had to have to get them back. You have to give them to me. So she ends up taking off her the stuff she's wearing, and she's like, you know, here, if you want it so badly. And he, like, he, it's, he like, calls her a whore, 
and then he walks outside, then he runs back in, and he rapes her, and then the nun walks in on them, and then she, the nun thinks that she's just whoring herself out, so she gets kicked out of there, and then she's back on the streets yet again, and... She goes to, she tries to go to see her son, because, like, um, they bring her into the palace. You know, they're like, you get to see your son briefly, just for a moment. She do not even get to talk to him, and she runs after him to try to talk to him, and she can't find him throughout the palace, and all the guards, and everyone's searching for her. And then years, and it goes into years later, which just kind of revolves back around the opening shots. But um, she's, like, she's just lives on the streets, and these prostitutes pick her up. And they're like, you might as well do this and, you know, live with us and you'll be happy this way because nobody else is going to care for you. And she ends up being like this really old, like, kind of like prostitute walking around where nobody, you know, cares to, uh, you know, pay to be with her. And then they, uh, she's walking along in the sky, sees her, and he brings her into this uh, inn, and he pays her to look at these, look at all these guys sitting at this table, and he says, you know, you were, this is like the face of like a demon cat woman or whatever, and you know, kind of like the shame of her being like this, you know, whore, courtesan, prostitute, and all this of her, of her past. But really, I mean, in the whole film, you know, she, she goes through with this the entire, her whole life. And she never really does, like, anything. It's just everybody assumes, you know, that that's who she is. Because, I mean, that's what they... It's not that she ever wanted to be in that. And she was put in those positions. And she's, you know, she had to live this life of just this so much, like, this guilt and shame. Of, and everybody seeing her a completely different of a person of who she really actually is. And it's just, like, at the time, it's just, like, so sad, like how they like treated like the women in Japan at the time. It's pretty much like sex objects. But this is just such an amazingly powerful film. Um, Life Over Haru, Kenji Misaguchi is amazing director, amazing cinematography, um, gets great performances out of all of his actors. Um, like I said, if you haven't seen this, check this one out, or Sancho the Bay Leaf. Um, there's a few, like the Kenzie Mitsuguchi, uh, Fallen Women series, a clip set from Contreon. Just amazing films, just an amazing filmmaker. And this next one is just a classic. John Hughes, 16 Candles. Like, who, who hasn't seen this? Molly Ringwald, Michael Anthony Hall. What's the guy's name? I want to say it's the Justin Henry. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure of his name. But the Jake character. I say him. He's Jake. I mean, who? I mean, honestly, who hasn't seen this? Just such an amazing film. This is a great film. It's like a romantic comedy. It's my second favorite John Hughes. Um, they they actually have Weird Science coming out, which I got that pre-ordered on Blue. I'm just keeping, still keeping my fingers crossed. You know, the Paramount releases the um. Some kind of wonderful on Blu-ray. And they still need to release Pretty in Pink on Blu-ray. But basically it's her birthday. And like everybody forgets her birthday. And she's just so upset about it. And her grandparents come over. And Long Duck Dong. A Chinese. Um, what do you call them? Not like a pen pal. Or what do you call those students? This feels like it's been such a long time ago since I've been in school now. But he comes over he, to live, to stay for a while. And um, just with her being with her family and everyone there, and you know nobody remembers her birthday, and she's just like really upset about it the whole day. And it's this dance, and she goes to the dance. She wants to be with Jake. She, he's kind of like her dream guy, and she has nobody to go to the dance with. And then of course uh, Anthony Michael Hall. He's like this nerd character. He's like the king of the nerds, and he's constantly put you know putting moves on Molly, trying to be with her. This whole time, you got to even have like a cameo in there by uh, John Cusack, who's like in part of his gang. And the end, they go to this party at Jake's place, and you know he's like, he's with like the prom queen, pretty much. And it's just really just a funny, just a funny ass film. You'll laugh your ass off through the entire film. 
um, everything between Long Duck Dong and her family and her grandparents and everything that takes place at the party. Like she eventually, and then her sis, uh, her sister's having a wedding. Her older sister is, and like on the day of the wedding, so like, like after over after the wedding, of course, uh, Jake shows up. And he's always he's he finds this note that she wrote, and he asks, you know, he asks Anthony about her and what kind of girl she is. They end up, you know, they they get together, and then he actually, that's pretty funny. He um, my Anthony Michael Hall. Gets to be gets to have a night with you know, the, the the prom queen. You know Jake's kind of girl. He lets her have her for the night, and he's driving his dad's like Mercedes. It's just a hilarious, hilarious film. If you haven't seen Sixteen Candles, seriously, you need to watch this one. And uh, the last one here. This is actually my favorite film of 2013. Now this is my favorite Danny Boyle film now, and this is Danny Boyle's Trance. Got James, um, what's his name, McCabe. Vincent Castle, Rosario Dawson. Um, the imagery of this. This is like a. Um, I'm not gonna ruin this. This is one of those films like in that there's a thing there's a retrospect Danny Boyle talking you know about like all of his films and then he's just such, he's one of my favorite directors working today and he's just like gets better and better and better. But um, each film is just just we have to watch Boyle's films even right like right there transporting. Slumdog Millionaire, 127 hours, um, you know, 28 days later, Sunshine, The Beach, uh, Millions, uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting something, like Shallow Grave, but anyways, back to, back to Trance, um, I'm not gonna spoil this, you really can't, this really is a mindfuck, and, um, if you don't like rated R films, a lot of language, um, nudity, sexual scenes, um, graphic, I mean, graphic violence. If you're really not into that, then stay away from this if you're looking for a PG-13 film, because it's definitely not it. But, um, basically, the beginning of it is that he, he works for the, this art, they sell, like, the arts, like Van Gogh and all this stuff, uh, really high, expensive pieces of art. And then, uh, Cat Vincent, he's a, a art robber, and they pull up. They're gonna pull off this art heist to get this piece of art or painting that they have there. And then he's kind of like, you know, the, one of the, the one of the guards selling the painting. And then they show up to get the painting. And so he um, does goes through this whole routine to where um, to so they can't have the painting, you know, to hide it and all this and protect it. And then. It turns out that he was supposed to be working with him, and then they um, he opens the briefcase, to, not really a briefcase, but you know, like a painting case, so that way it doesn't get bent or damaged or anything. And he sees that the paint, the canvas isn't there, and so he knows that he hit it somewhere. But because he hits him upside the head with the butt of his gun, he loses his memory of where he put the painting, and then that's where Rosario comes into the scene. And then the story is that. She, um, it's like the psychiatrist and therapist, and she can put people in a trance where she can make them remember, forget things. <sighs> and so they're just trying to get him to remember where he put the painting at. And it just, it's like, all right, okay, like Inception is like, you know, they try to plant ideas into people's minds. And this is like them trying to implant, like, the certain memory or, or try to forget something. And I can't, I'm not, I'm not going to ruin this, but like the whole film, it's just this big trance, like the way you've got like this, like blurred imagery, vibrant colors, just amazing the way he uses the lighting and the colors, some of those beautiful, just awesome looking scenes, um, the way things are like, like I said, more like out of focus or really like translucent and kind of just the whole film, the way it's shot like puts you in like this dazzling trance but it just it becomes like a mind fuck in the end I was like I was like when I get to the end I was like man I was like you know what if I figure this out this film isn't gonna be that good and then you get the end and you don't figure it out and I was like yes because like it's just like it goes one way and then it goes this other way you're like maybe and then you're loop back around this way and then at the end it's kind of like 
and you want him to press that button so bad, but you, it's just like, ah, and he doesn't, it's like, ah, you've got to see, I mean, this is just, looking. if you want a film to really think about, like Inception, or the ending of Blade Runner, or 2001, or, you know, other films like that, where you get to the end of the film, and you're just like, you know, like, what the fuck, you know, what, what does this mean? I'm seriously probably going to watch this again here tonight. I'm definitely going to watch this one a lot more times. But, um, if you don't like films that don't make you think, don't watch this film. There's even kind of sequence in the end that's kind of like Inception, where, like, you know, Inception, they're like, the their vans going slow-mo off the dam, and then at the end of this, they actually push this car off and over into the water. It's kind of the same... And it plays out like it's just I'm not gonna ruin anything. It's just you, you gotta wa you gotta watch this. Denny Boyle's trance. But uh those are my blurry updates for this time. I know it's a big update because I've just been slacking on and haven't been getting around to it, so there they are. And um until next time, uh thanks for watching. I'm Sean the Brown and I'll see you next time.